fellow makeup lovers, how are you guys doing? Welcome back to another day of Indie Mist. Today I wanted to go ahead and discuss all of my favorite indie makeup products that you can find at Sephora. I have been wanting to do this video topic for a while because I feel like it's a great way to try some smaller brands that are available pretty accessibly, at least as far as being able to go into Sephora or order from a Sephora, having easy returns if something doesn't work out for you, and also just having that like trust factor knowing that like it's sold at Sephora everything is good because I know that sometimes trying new indie brands can be a little bit I don't know if scary is the right word but maybe like nerve-wracking for some people when you don't really know what to expect so anyways today I went through Sephora and I just did a list of the 10 products that I recommend the most from indie brands that are available on Sephora it's kind of weird because Sephora does like a lot of indie brands but they kind of come and go so there were some products I was thinking of and then they were not available on Sephora anymore but I can promise you that all 10 of these are amazing so let's just go ahead and jump on in Okay. so first I'm gonna start off with a foundation this is from LYS it's their triple fix serum foundation in the shade LG1 which is the lightest shade that they have this is the foundation that I'm wearing today and it has been a staple favorite since I first tried it I feel like this is a really beautiful like medium almost full coverage I feel like if you're someone who likes a light coverage foundation but you want to have something a little bit more full coverage just for those days when you want a little something extra you're feeling a little extra glam then I would highly recommend this foundation because I feel like it looks like skin I feel like you can still see some of my freckles peeking through but it does a really good job at coverage it looks very natural on the face it doesn't look super super dewy um, at least not how I'm wearing it today and it doesn't normally look super matte either a lot of times I really like mixing in a glow product with this like the or glow less but even worn on its own which is how I have it on today I think it looks beautiful it also wears really nicely the only thing is if you are super fair the lightest shade is a very yellow golden tone I personally can make it work because I have more of a neutral skin tone and I don't like wearing pink tone foundation so I'd rather have yellow but it's just something to keep in mind I feel like the name is a little misleading because you read serum and I think of something super super light coverage but that's not the case at all it also says it's cruelty free vegan gluten free so yeah that is my favorite foundation available at Sephora from an indie brand and actually, I'm pretty sure overall too. Okay, so next I have the Kosas Blush Duo, specifically the cream formula. I have two different shades I want to mention. They're just the two that I own, but they do have quite a few different shades. And then they also have these shades like available the way that I have them in like a... Um, a less pigmented version and then they also have a high intensity version so for anyone who has a deep skin tone and wants these same shades but wants them a little bit richer those are available which I think is cool so my favorite top one would definitely be 8th Muse which is what I have on my cheeks today I do not have any bronzer on I don't have any highlight on I just went in with this pretty heavily all over and then I used the darker pink to kind of contour a little bit right here and I think it looks so so pretty I mean look at that glow it's just such a stunning formula so like I said this is eighth muse we've got the pink and then we've got this shade which is supposed to be more of a highlight and it does have a stunning glow to it but it has a decent amount of pigmentation so I normally use it as a blush or mix it in with the other blush so there's what eighth muse looks like like I said it's an absolute favorite I think it looks beautiful I even threw a little bit of powder when I was just setting my face and still like I mean it looks wet it looks glowy it does not look cakey at all it blends effortlessly so yeah I love these I feel like I need to pick up another shade but the two shades that I have I already love so much so I don't know I don't know I want like you know when you love a product so much that you want every shade that's how I feel about this formula so the other one is called velvet melon and this is a really beautiful kind of peachy warm tone duo so here's what this one looks like I mean you can see obviously I use the pink one quite a bit more but it's still beautiful so you've got like a stunning peach you can see the glow and then more of like a iridescent kind of golden highlight. So there's Velvet Melon. The highlight from this one is a bit more of a true highlight on my skin tone, but I just can't recommend those enough. If you like cream blush, they're so good. Okay, I have one more cream blush to mention really quickly, and that is going to be from LYS. This is their Satin Matte Cream Blush, which does sound a little ironic, but the shade is Kindness. 
and this is definitely my favorite like true peach cream blush it's just such a beautiful shade it is so so pigmented but at the same time it just blends absolutely beautifully so let me just do a little swatch for you here i mean it is literally the most perfect peach like it has the perfect amount of orange the perfect amount of pink in it so here's what that one looks like i mean it is just stunning i feel like it's also just so beautiful for summer like that just gives me summer blush vibes but again like i said i mean you can see it is so pigmented but it blends pretty um this one even though it's called like a satin matte, the Kosas ones are definitely a bit more glowy. So maybe if you have oily skin, you would like this one a little bit more. I personally like all of them. <laughs> Just trying to give recommendations though. So that is another favorite. They have a few different shades. I haven't tried any of the other ones, but judging from this one, I would say if there's one you like, maybe go for it. I don't, I don't, I don't like to say those things normally because I don't like to like make people feel pressured to buy things, but I am just saying it's good quality. Okay, so next we have a cream highlight kind of. This is the Danessa Myricks Dew Wet Balm in the shade Clear and this is definitely a favorite and I'm so excited that Danessa Myricks is available at Sephora now because I used to always purchase her from her website or from Beautylish, but um, yeah, there she's on Sephora and her products are amazing. So I would say this is definitely one of my top favorite products. I love this because it's super unique. It's one of those things I would recommend to anyone who likes a cream look because you can put this over any powder product and it does not look cakey. It just basically transforms it. So a lot of times if I have like a powder cheek on, I will go in with this and I'll just dab over it and it will make it look and look like this the way that my face looks right now because i went in with cream products it will make powder products look like cream products um and in this one it just has no shade to it it's completely clear but there are some other shades available i really like this one because i just feel like it's kind of universal it can go over everything anywhere i will say the only thing is if you don't like more of like that like kind of sticky cheek feeling like you touch your cheek and you can feel the product a little bit then maybe this wouldn't be for you. I personally don't mind that at all, so it doesn't bug me, not one bit. There's definitely other products out there that are way stickier than this, but it still has that consistency just a little tiny bit, but I feel like it's worth it. I feel like especially for people who have minimalist collections that this would be so useful. So next, you know we can't go through this video and not talk about Natasha Denona. She has so many eyeshadow palettes and I couldn't decide what to talk about exactly because there's just so many and if i had to talk about one palette it would be the gold palette but that is unfortunately no longer on the sephora website so i would say just for my personal favorite the camel palette is one that i truly truly love it's just those kind of like grungy mustardy golden neutral tones i feel like this palette just does it perfectly every time i see it on the website i feel like it does not capture it the way that it looks in person like the tones are just so so stunning i feel like if you liked the neutral shades that were in the natasha nona gold palette but not the pops of color then this gives a very very similar look so it's the one that i would recommend for my own personal preferences but like i said she has so many palettes that are you know there's different colors and undertones and everything and i feel like overall her quality is really really good and if I was going to buy an eyeshadow palette on the Sephora website Natasha Nona would be one of the first pages I would go to so I just want to throw that in let's go ahead and do a lip product so I wanted to talk about some glosses from Tower 28 I really really love these glosses so I have the shade O, which is kind of like a light kind of peachy shade and then we also have cashew which is like kind of like a warm Pinky neutral. I have cashew on cashew. I don't know why I keep saying cashew. Cashew. I have cashew on my lips right now. And you can see it's just like a really beautiful, glossy look. But these are extremely comfortable. I also like them a lot because they're pretty affordable. I believe that they're $14 each. Last time I was in Sephora with my best friend, we were going through looking at different glosses and I was like, girl, get you this. Like, it's $14. You can't beat it. I should say that these both are part of the Milky formula, but their regular glosses are really great as well. I just feel like they're so comfortable, but they give you that super glossy, glossy look. So I guess I'll do some swatches real quick. Okay, so they're pretty sheer. Here's what Oat looks like. 
I almost wonder if mine have gone bad though because they look a little bit more orange than they used to be. I don't know if I'm crazy, but there's cashew. I know that this is one of those clean beauty brands that probably doesn't use a ton of preservatives, so I wouldn't be surprised if they do go bad faster, but still feels super comfortable, still looks super pretty, so I guess I'm risking it. Next, another highlighter that I'm not going to talk about for too long because I mention this all the time, but I absolutely love the Nanashina Super Glow Highlighter Formula. I have the shade Fair which just looks like this. I feel like this is one of those highlighters that just looks like cream on your face, but it's so reflective. It can be so intense depending on what brush you use, and I just feel like I love it. <laughs> so there's what it looks like. I mean, it really does not do the highlight justice, but you can kind of see there like just how pretty it is when it catches the light. I've worn this in a ton of videos. I've talked about it in a ton of favorites videos, and it just continues to be one of my favorite products at Sephora. Um, I think, again, if I could only choose like one highlighter out of everything that's sold on Sephora, pretty sure it would be this. I feel like that's a lot, but I feel like that says a lot. I almost just threw that. Okay, <laughs> next I wanted to mention this lip product really quickly. This is from Jouer, and it is one of their little lip balms. I have the shade of Marilis, and I feel like this is kind of like an underrated product. I never hear anyone talk about these, and I feel like a lot of people don't know that Jouer is independently owned, but it is, and um, I actually watched a podcast of the owner before, and it was really interesting, but um, I really love this lipstick because I feel like it's kind of like that sheer, balmy, satiny kind of lipstick. I like the shade as well because it's such a pretty, like, brownie, cool toned shade. So there's what a mirrorless looks like. And I mean, you can kind of see compared to the tube that it is a little bit lighter, a little bit more sheer, but it's just super, super comfortable on the lips. It gives that like a little bit of glow. I feel like it's just a very easy product and it's just super nice. And the packaging is really cute too. I mean, the pink and gold details. So that's another one I would recommend. I haven't tried much from Jouer, only this and their lip balm, which their lip balm is amazing as well. I wanted to mention it, but I literally can't find my tube of it anywhere, but I'll throw that in. I'll link it down below in case you want to check it out. It's like one of those really thick, but super glossy lip balms. It just looks so pretty by itself, but it's also very nourishing, everything you could want from a lip balm. But anyways, yeah, so I haven't tried that much from Jouer, but that one's definitely a favorite. This product is a little bit newer, and I saw it on the Sephora website, and then it came off the Sephora website, but I'm not sure if it's gonna end up back there again, but I wanted to go ahead and mention it, because even though in my initial like, first impression, I kind of talked about this and said that, you know, I don't think that it's gonna be worth it for everyone, I think that it's still a very valuable item. It's still a very, it's, it's, it's a good thing. <laughs> I don't even know how to describe this, okay. So I'm talking about the Danessa Myricks Lightwork Volume 3 palette, and I just feel like if you shop a lot on Sephora, but you haven't tried a ton of indie brands, you don't have a ton of single shadows, um, that this palette gives you a lot of different textures, a lot of fun all in one. So here's what it looks like. You've got a few different multi-chromes, you've got some cream shadows, powder shadows. There is a pressed glitter, which to me is the one like huge downfall. I wish it wasn't in there, but Anyways, there's also four different really big highlighters. I have this shade, which is called Strawberry Moon, just on my inner corner today for like a super, super simple look. But they're all different duo chromes. And then, I mean, it's just, a, like I said, a bunch of different textures. So whether this is worth it to you really depends on what your collection looks like. But if I was recommending a brand to try, a palette to try from Sephora. This one would definitely be on there for someone who's wanting to get into some different types of makeup. Like a lot of these you're not gonna find in any other palette in Sephora. I feel like it's pretty unique for the Sephora website. So I just wanted to go ahead and throw it in. Also, it is very expensive. It's like $125, but if you broke down all of the shades versus buying them individually from a bunch of different brands, I think that it would be a similar price, of course, then you would have choices if you went to different indie brands. You'd be able to choose exactly what multi-chromes, exactly what duochromes you wanted. So it really, really depends on you on whether it's worth it or not. But I would say that it is a really cool one and I'm glad it's on Sephora. And I think Nessa Myricks 
is killing it. All right, so I'm pretty sure, no, 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 oh my gosh, I almost forgot, I almost forgot the 10th product, which is also from Danessa Myricks. I moved it to the side when I was doing my makeup. This is the Evolution Powder, and I just wanted to mention this really quickly, even though it's not an exciting product by any means, it's literally just a translucent powder, but this is a really great one, I feel like, if you have dry skin, but you need just a little something to set your face. I feel like it sets everything, but it doesn't make anything cakey. It definitely helps my makeup last longer throughout the day. This was a lifesaver during summer because I have lived in the North for a few years and then now like living in North Carolina and having a little bit of a hot summer, I was like, oh wow, like my makeup is sweating off. I'm not used to this and this powder came through. I don't know if you can see, um, from the back, but I've used like almost half of it. So I mean that's a lot for me because I use powder very minimally But that is another favorite that I would recommend and there are a few different shades I believe available on the Sephora website, but if I remember correctly Beautylish might have more shades So that's something to look into but now those are all ten of the, my favorite products sold on Sephora from indie brands if you'd like to see this video concept for Beautylish and also Ulta I was thinking of, then just let me know down below. But that's everything. I'll see you guys in the next video tomorrow.